It is a common dictum amongst Muslims to assert that the Quran has been preserved with miraculous perfection, without the slightest variation or error since its revelation over 1400 years ago. They claim this because the orthodox Islamic doctrine is to believe that the Quran was written on heavenly tablets for all eternity, and this was dictated word for word to Muhammad by the angel Gabriel from Allah. This was then meticulously memorized and recorded by Muslims throughout the ages until modern times. The common belief, therefore, is that not a dot or error has ever crept into the Quran, with only one unified Arabic copy of the Quran ever in existence. The truth is, as we shall see in this video, Islamic sources itself repudiates this claim. The truth is that there were variations of the Quran amongst early companions. Some verses were missing and even whole chapters are missing from today's Quran. For example, in Tirmizi 3104, the link is below in the description box. It says people gathered their own Qurans, so disputes started emerging. Due to these variations of Qurans, early Muslims started to fight over the issue. A commentary of Sahih Bukhari by Ibn Hajar called Fatul Bari, in the chapter named Virtues of the Quran, he explains how Hafsa, one of Muhammad's wives, refused to give her Quran to Uthman, and it was only upon her death that he managed to get hold of it. Eventually he destroyed this original, which begs the question, if it was the original from which he made his own copies, why did he still feel the need to destroy it? Uthman was not part of the four whom Muhammad praised for knowing the Quran the best, nor was Zayd ibn Thabit Uthman's secretary, who was put in charge of the Quran compilation. So there were different versions of the Quran before the political order was given to have them burned. Some of these Quran versions were written by people who knew Muhammad and the Quran the best. In Sahih al-Bukhari, references of which are in the description below, Muhammad said, Learn the Quran from four people. These were Abdullah bin Masood, Salim the freed slave of Abu Huzaifa, Ubay bin Ka'ab, and Mu'adh bin Jabal. The existence of early Quran variants made Ubay bin Ka'ab doubt the divinity of the Quran and shake his faith in Islam, though he was a major companion and reciter of the Quran. The hadith relating to this is found in Musnad Ahmed and also at Tabari, both of which are referenced in the book Islam the Honest Truth, whereby Ubay said, quote, I entered the mosque, so I prayed and read the chapter of the bees and Nahal. Then a man came and he read it other than our reading, and another entered and he read only the reading of his friend. And I entered in me doubt and suspicion, more severe since the time of Jahiliyyah, pre-Islam, end quote. The other famous companion and recitum Ibn Mas'ud in his Quran had differing numbers of verses and differing chapters from today's Quran. These select group of companions, the Sahabas as they are referred to in the Arabic, had their own unique versions of the Quran. Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay bin Ka'ab's Quran were also destroyed by Uthman. This is referenced in the book Islam the Honest Truth. For example, in Kitab al-Masahif, Ibn Mas'ud is quoted as saying, How can you order me to recite the reading of Zayd? When I recited from the very mouth of the Prophet some seventy surahs or chapters, am I, he asks, to abandon what I acquired from the very lips of the Prophet? In the already cited Tirmidhi 3104, a hadith which is graded as sahih or authentic by Muslim scholars, Ibn Masud went on to say, quote, O Muslims, avoid copying the Mus'haf, Quran, and recitation of Zayd ibn Thabit, by Allah, when I accepted Islam, he was put in the loins of a disbelieving man. End quote. It was in connection to this Ibn Masud went on to say, quote, O people of Iraq, hide the Masahif, Qurans, so that they are not destroyed, that are with you and conceal it. In effect, Ibn Masud was saying to the people, from those who had his version of the Quran, to hide it from the likes of Uthman and Zayd, who are actively destroying these Qurans and compiling their own version which Mus Ibn Mas'ud considered to be deceptive. He used strong words to condemn their Qur'an. In describing it, the word ghulluha, indicated by the arrow, comes from the Arabic verb ghalla, which means deceit, corruption, defraud, hidden, interpolation, added. Hide or conceal, 
It is the very same verb that is used in the Quranic verse cited in the Hadith as a condemnation for any concealment of fraud. It clearly shows that how Ibn Mas'ud did not trust Zayd's, Zayd's Quran and Usman's actions in compiling their Qurans, which is recited by mainstream Muslims of today and differed from his own Quran. To illustrate some of the differences, Ibn Mas'ud did not have the first chapter called Surah Fatiha in his Quran. For him, it was a prayer. He also read it differently to today's recitation. He read verse 6 as Arshidan as Sirat al Mustaqim instead of Ihdin al Sirat al Mustaqim. Also, Surahs 113 and 114 of today's Quran were not part of his Quran either. His Quran had extra surahs or chapters not part of today's Quran, as did Ubay bin Ka'b. They both had chapters entitled Surah al khula and Surah al haft These are not found anywhere in today's Quran. Ubay served as a secretary to Muhammad and could recite much of the Quran, which he had learned directly from Muhammad. Like Ibn Mas'ud, he also did not include chapters 113 and 114 as part of his Quran. So before Caliph Uthman's standardization, where variants were burned, the Quran contained different chapters compared to the present 114 chapters of today. Unlike Ibn Mas'ud, Ubay bin Ka'b had Surah Fatiha in his Quran, but he read verse 6 as Basinna as Sirat al Mustaqim instead of Ihdin al Sirat al Mustaqim. References to this and much more are cited in the book Islam the Honest Truth. To illustrate some of the verses that are missing from today's Quran, that were in Ibn Mas'ud and Ubay's Quran. Consider Quran chapter 33 verse 6. In the footnote of Abdullah Yusuf Ali's famous translation of the Quran, he makes reference in re- relation to the verse by stating that Ubay's Quran had the words, quote, He is a father of them. However, these words are not found anywhere in today's Quran. Contrary to today's rhetoric, about the preservation of the Qur'an, early Muslims and scholars believed that the Qur'an was not complete. This could have been due to his collection, forgetfulness, or due to Muslims being killed. For example, in Sahih al-Bukhari narrated Zayd ibn Thabit, Abu Bakr sent for him when the people of Yamama had been killed. These were people who had been killed, companions who fought against Musaylamah. Zayd went to him and found Umar ibn Khattab sitting with him. Abu Bakr then said to Zayd, quote, Umar has come to me and said, Casualties were heavy amongst the Qur'an or reciters of the Qur'an, those who knew the Qur'an by heart, on the day of the Battle of Yamama. And I am afraid that more casualties may take place among the Qur'an on other battlefields, whereby a large part of the Qur'an may be lost. In Arabic, the word used for lost is fayadhab. A Suyuti in his al fi Ulum al-Qur'an, which is referenced in the book Islam, the Honest Truth, says, quote, Muslims were soul altered, therefore much of the Qur'an was lost. Zahab, the same verb, but in the past tense. So Abu Bakr did not want to lose any more of the Qur'an, so he sought to compile the Qur'an in one volume. For evidence that verses were actually lost, consider Sahih al-Bukhari 2814, narrated Anas bin Malik, For thirty days, Allah's Messenger invoked Allah to curse those who had killed the companions of Bir Ma'una. He invoked evil upon the tribes of Ri'al, the Qawad and Usayya, who disobeyed Allah and his apostle. There was revealed about those who were killed at Bir Ma'una, a Quranic verse we used to recite but it was cancelled later on. The verse was, Inform our people that we have met our Lord. He is pleased with us, and He has made us pleased. This verse, mentioned in the Hadith, is not anywhere to be found in today's Quran. Quran, chapter 2, verse 238, has the word Salat al-Asr, missing according to Sunan al-Nasai 472. It was narrated that Abu Yunus, the freed slave of Aisha, the wife of the Prophet, said, 
Aisha told me to copy a mushaf Quran for her, and she said, when you reach this verse, call my attention. Guard strictly the salawat or prayers, especially the middle al usta salah. When I reached it, I called her attention and she dictated to me, guard strictly the salawat, especially the middle al usta salah and the salat al-asr, asr prayer, and stand before Allah with obedience. Then she said, I heard it from the Messenger of Allah. What is missing from today's Quran is not merely a few verses or words, but entire chapters. For example, in Sahih Muslim, Volume 5, Hadith 2-86, the relevant section says, quote, We used to recite a surah which resembled in length and severity to Surah Bara. I have, however, forgotten it, with the exception of this which I remember out of it. If there were two valleys full of riches for the son of Adam, he would long for a third valley, and nothing would fill the stomach of the son of Adam but dust. End quote. And we used to recite a surah which resembled one of the surahs of Musabbihat, and I have forgotten it, but remember this much out of it. O people who believe, why do you say that which you do not practice? And that is recorded in your necks as a witness against you when you would be asked about it on the day of resurrection. The Musabbihat are those relatively long chapters of the Quran found in chapter numbers 57, 59, 61, 62 and 64. Referenced in Islam the honest truth, Ubay bin Ka'ab inquired how many verses were there in the chapter of Al-Ahzab, chapter 33. He replied, 72 or 73 verses. Ubay bin Ka'ab then said, I had seen in the surah more or equal to Surah Baqarah. End quote. Surah Baqarah has 286 verses. So this is a shortfall of around 214 verses missing from today's Quran. In Dur al-Mansur, volume 6, page 560, it says, quote, Aisha narrated that during the lifetime of Muhammad, 200 verses were recited in Surah Al-Ahzab. But when Uthman collected the Quran, he only succeeded in locating the present number of verses, end quote. Today's Quran contains only 73 verses in Surah Al-Ahzab. Other chapters of the Quran are missing too. In Dur al Manthur, volume 3, page 208, a Suyuti was quoting scholars like At Tabarani, Al Hakim, and Ibn Shayba says, Huzaifa narrated that the surah which you call Tawbah, also called Bara, is actually called Surah Azab, Rath, and you should, you just recite one fourth of what we recite. End quote. A Suyuti in Al Tqan fi Ulum al Quran, page 525, says, In Ubay bin Ka'ab's Quran, these verses were there. These traditions, quoted in records, are from the most authoritative of Islamic sources, all of which clearly indicate that the Quran in its present form is somewhat incomplete. In Tafsir Fat al Qadir, volume 2, page 317, it says, quote, When the first part of Surah Bara was lost, Imam Malik, one of the founders of the four major Islamic schools of jurisprudence, says that the Bismillah was also long lost along with it. This is why Muslims no longer recite Bismillah for the Surah today. In Tafsir al-Qurtubi, it reiterates, quote, Malik said, among what had been narrated by Ibn Wahab and Ibn Al-Qasim and Ibn Abdul Hakam, is that when the first part of Surah Bara was lost, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim was also lost along with it. There is a disputed phrase in Quran chapter 92. In Tirmizi, narrated al qama we arrived in Sham and we went to Abu Darda, so he said, Is there any among you who can recite for me according to the recitation of Abdullah ibn Mas'ud? He said, They pointed to me, so I said, Yes, I can recite it. He said, how did you hear Abdullah recite this ayah or verse? By the night as it envelops. He said, I said, I heard him recite it. Wal-layli idha yakhshya, wal-dhakari wal-unsa. Abu Darda said, me too. May Allah, this is how I heard the Messenger of Allah reciting it. But these people want me to recite it. Wa ma khalaqa. 
but I will not follow them. Today's Quran has the words وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا يَخْشَى which is the same but then it has the words وَالنَّهَارِ إِذَا تَجَلَّى then the next verse is وَمَا خَلَقَ الذَّكَرَ وَالْأُنْسَى so this is obviously different from Ibn Masud and Muhammad's recitation of the Quran according to this hadith just cited. Another argument used for Quran's miraculous preservation is that it was supposedly memorized by many people. Muslims pride themselves on the Quran having many chains of people attesting its recitation and its memorization by a multiplicity of people. In Arabic, this is called mutawatir. However, Islamic sources say Muhammad and his companions had forgotten parts of the Quran, that there have been occasions when a verse was found with only one other person, which means it is not mutawatir or having a multiple chain, so it should not have been included in the Quranic Codex. Also, some Quranic verses have been lost forever because of forgetfulness. Muhammad forgot verses of the Quran mentioned in many places. As an illustration, Sahih al-Bukhari 6335 narrated Aisha, quote, The Prophet heard a man reciting in the mosque, and he said, May Allah bestow his mercy upon him. No doubt he made me remember such and such a verse of such uh, which I had missed in such and such a surah, end quote. This hadith is also repeated in Sahih al-Bukhari 5037. In Sahih al-Bukhari 5032 narrated Abdullah that Muhammad said, It is a bad thing that some of you say I have forgotten such and such a verse of the Quran. For indeed, say, he has been caused by Allah to forget it. So you must keep on reciting the Quran because it escapes from the hearts of men faster than camels do. In Sahih Muslim, Volume 4, 1724, a hadith which is also found in Sahih al-Bukhari, Abdullah reported Muhammad saying, What a wretched person is he amongst them who says, I have forgotten such and such a verse. He should, instead of using this expression, say, I have been made to forget it. Try to remember the Quran, for it is more apt to escape from men's minds than a hobbled camel. Also, memory could not be relied upon because the verses relating to stoning adulterers and breastfeeding adults was lost forever due to no one remembering it. In Ibn Majah 1944, Aisha said, quote, The verse of stoning and of breastfeeding adults ten times was revealed and the paper was with me under the pillow. When the Messenger of Allah died, we were preoccupied with his death, and a tame sheep came and ate it. End quote. Even if the paper was lost, no one had memorized it or remembered the verses. That is why both these verses are absent from today's Quran. Because if it is alleged that these verses were not forgotten, where can these verses be found in today's Quran? Can anyone recite it? In the brackets it says the verses were abrogated in recitation but not in ruling. It says this because they were not included in the Quran. However, even for the rule of abrogation, Quranic verses are in the recitation, only its rulings are abrogated. Confirmation that it was forgotten can be found in Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 816. Umar said, quote, I am afraid that after a long time has passed, people may say, we do not find the verses of the Rajam stoning to death in the holy book, and consequently they may go astray by leaving an obligation that Allah has revealed. Lo, I confirm that the penalty of Rajam stoning be inflicted on him who commits illegal sexual intercourse if he is already married and the crime is proved by witnesses or pregnancy or confession. End quote. Sufyan added, I have memorized this narration in this way. Umar added, 
Surely Allah's Apostle carried out the penalty of Rajam, stoning, and so did we after him. In Sahih al-Bukhari 6830, it says, Allah sent Muhammad with the truth and revealed the holy book to him. And among what Allah revealed was the verse of the Rajam, the stoning of married persons, male and female, who commit adultery. And we did indeed recite this verse and understood and memorized it. Allah's Apostle did carry out the punishment of stoning, and so did we after him. I am afraid that after a long time has passed, somebody will say, By Allah, we do not find the verse of the Rajam in Allah's book. And thus, they will go astray by leaving an obligation which Allah has revealed. So this is confirming that there are missing verses from the Quran. If the Quran is miraculously preserved to the dot, and memorized by a multiplicity of people, why are these verses not found in today's Quran? Some of the verses of the Quran was found with only one person. In Sahih al-Bukhari 4049, narrated Zayd ibn Thabit, When we wrote the Holy Quran, I missed one of the verses of Surah Al-Azab, which I used to hear Allah's Apostle reciting. Then we searched for it and found it with Khuzayma ibn Thabit al-Ansari. The verse was, Among the believers are men who have been true to their covenant with Allah. Of them, some have fulfilled their obligations to Allah and some of them are still waiting. So we wrote this in its place in the Quran. In Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 509, another verse was found with only one man. The relevant section of the lengthy hadith says, quote, I started looking for the Quran and collecting it from what was written on palmed stalks, thin white stones, and also from the men who knew it by heart, till I found the last verse of Surah Tawbah, which is called Repentance, also called Surah Bara with Abu Khazaima al Ansari. And I did not find it with anybody else other than him. The verse is, Verily there has come unto you an apostle, Muhammad, from amongst yourselves. It grieves him that you should receive any injury or difficulty. Then the complete manuscripts of the Quran remained with Abu Bakr till he died, then with Umar till he died, till the end of his life, and then with Hafsa, the daughter of Umar. The problem with this is that the Quran was supposedly revealed and collected by a multiple testimony called Mutawatir in Arabic. However, according to these hadiths, it had only one other witness to it. This calls into the legitimacy of including it in the Quran due to the verse being Khabar al-Wahid, a non-Mutawatir tradition. A legitimate question, therefore, is from the thousands of companions why was it only found with one other person? Where were the other reciters of the Quran? And why were these Quran verses included when it does not meet the criteria according to the standards that have been set? So the conclusion, even from Islamic sources, is there were different Qurans in early Islam. Muhammad's companions, some of whom knew the Qur'an better than Uthman, disagreed on the Qur'an. There were words, verses and whole chapters missing from the Qur'an. Muhammad forgot parts of the Qur'an. His companions forgot parts of the Qur'an. Some Qur'anic verses have only one other witness testimony.